<laughs> and it's L A U R A. Yep. Okay. Well, people always want to know are you your main character? Thank you. Do you want me to personalize it for you? I think that there's probably a little bit of every author in their main character. Everybody here tonight, I think, is a cousin of mine. And a lot of stuff is just pure imagination. And you, you need that to be a writer as well. My name's Julie Kramer. I live here in White Bear Lake, but I grew up in southern Minnesota along the Minnesota-Iowa state line. I took kind of a secretive view when I started writing a novel. Because I have such a large extended family, I didn't want to constantly be answering questions like, you know, what page are you on? So I really didn't tell a lot of people until it actually had been sold and I knew it was coming out. A lot of my book stuff has to do with my background in television news, but in this latest book, much of it is set in southern Minnesota, which kind of captures my farm roots. I grew up on a family farm that's been in our family for more than 130 years. And my siblings and I are actually the first generation off the farm. On this side is Minnesota, on that side is Iowa. And so we used to, as kids, like to run around Minnesota, Iowa, Minnesota, Iowa along the road. We'd husk a lot of sweet corn, pick a lot of green beans. We were a corn and cattle family. Here's a picture of me. This is my champion steer that I took to the fair one year. It's got some of the finest farmland in the world. It goes until probably that other field you see over there. Um, my um, great-grandparents started the farm. My grandfather farmed on it. Um, my parents farmed on it. And my siblings and I, none of us have gone into farming. All right, here's the place. I grew up here. But growing up, it was kind of a hard life. When I decided to sit down and write a novel, I thought it best to set it in Minnesota. I'd be able to create scenes in real locations. And I think people like to read books in which they say, hey, I've been there, or I've eaten there, or I've walked around that park. For my character, um, she's set in a television newsroom, a very contemporary urban scene, but yet she comes from a very rural area. I think it gives people kind of a sense of context and it makes the story seem very real. And so there's lots of outbuildings to hold corn and a lot of feedlot operations. I did kind of try to capture some of what growing up in rural Minnesota is like, and I thought this could be a great setting for a thriller. I first started off working for the Minneapolis Tribune, and I knew someone at WCCO-TV who suggested I come over there and work. And it ended up being a really good fit, and I stayed for about 20 years. I did various things there. I was a field producer. I worked on the assignment desk. I produced newscasts. I produced a public affairs show. And I used to run their investigative unit, their I-team. It's a, a crazy world. And you get accustomed to it and so that it almost feels normal. What was kind of interesting was the time that I wrote news, I would often find myself thinking, darn the facts. If I didn't have to deal with these facts, boy, what a story I could tell. And that is the trailer for Four of a Kind. But when I sat down to try and write fiction, I found myself wishing I had some facts. Because making stuff up after a you know career of sticking to the straight and narrow rules or rules, making stuff up kind of felt like cheating. And I had to work through that in my mind. And then I found that news was actually a very good backdrop for fiction. Journalists know how to deal with deadlines. They type fast. They write lean and mean. And I have interviewed hundreds of people, many of them on the best or worst days of their lives. And uh, I think that's how we develop an ear for dialogue. I left WCCO-TV in early 2001. Running the I-Team was a high-stress-level job. It was hard to do with little kids. So I started putzing around working on a novel. I didn't 
write it chronologically. The first chapter I wrote for Stalking Susan is actually chapter three in the book. Essentially, I created the character first, my protagonist, um, Riley Sparts. I don't know if there's a way or easy way to answer how you develop a character. I just made her the kind of heroine that I thought people would be interested in. So many books that are written that feature reporters in it, the reporter is the sidekick, the annoying one who, when you need to have someone be killed off during the story, you're like, who do I have? And you know, that person is convenient to use. And I, I wanted a story in which the reporter could be the hero. And a lot of times it's hard to write that because a lot of times people don't like the media. And for um, a heroine to, you know, to succeed in fiction, you have to have people kind of relate to them or sympathize with them and root for them. And in the real world, often people aren't rooting for the media, not these days. Part of what I like to do is take people into how newsrooms make decisions. And I decided when I sat down to write a book that what I needed to do was be candid about the flaws within the profession. And Some of my former colleagues think that perhaps I've been a little too candid in talking about how the news works. And they wish I hadn't said things like, if it bleeds, it leads. <laughs> and things like that for the readers. But I felt like when I sat down to do this that um, I had to address the flaws within the profession. And um, the news profession isn't perfect, and it's, um, I, I understand the limitations very well. My first book was Stalking Susan. That was my debut. And that book dealt with a TV reporter discovering a serial killer targeting women named Susan. I wrote that book because I was inspired by some cold cases I had covered as a journalist, and the cases remain unsolved today. My second book, Missing Mark, dealt with a wedding dress want ad, for sale, never worn, and my TV reporter heroine answers the ad and is pulled into a dangerous missing person case. And then in my third book, Silencing Sam, a gossip columnist is murdered, and my TV reporter heroine would like to cover the story but can't because she's become the main suspect. We sell Julie Kramer's books constantly. <laughs> she's a very big favorite in the store. She first came in when she was writing Stalking Susan and talked about it. Now, in the little in the book business, you get a lot of people walking in and saying, I'm writing a book, and you think, yeah, sure, you know. But she was so dynamic. Hi there. And she was so engaging. Oh, it's so wonderful to watch it because, you know, it's probably their dream come true. But it's also really exciting for the people around them, their neighbors, their friends. Julie's relatives come, and they always have the T-shirt on with the book, and they're very supportive. Two, three. Perfect. Well, she's a relative newcomer, and she um, she promotes. She's very, very good at what she does. Well, thanks for coming in. Okay. Bye. Bye. She's um, enthusiastic and very outgoing. Um, just a lot of fun to be around. Here's my dad's grave here. My dad was a storyteller in addition to being a farmer. He would go around southern Minnesota and he would tell stories, some of them about um, historic things in the past, you know, growing up in the country and rural life. There was plenty of work for all the hay and straw I had to be handled with a fork. My, my regret in being an author was that my dad died without being able to see that because I know he would have been so proud of me. And I know he would have just been um, exhilarated by, you know, feeling, you know, the heft of a book in his hand knowing that I had written it. So I like to think that I got some of my storytelling flair from him. Um, right now I have to take it one book at a time. I've got three books under my belt now. I'm working on the fourth, and where I go from there, we'll have to see. It's just been really
really gratifying. They've been well reviewed and um, it's just always kind of a kick to have people tell you that they liked your work. Someone actually reading one of my books and that hasn't happened yet, but I can always hope. It hasn't happened yet, but I can always hope. Yeah, I, I don't see myself leaving Minnesota. Um, Minnesota's been very good to me and I enjoy um, living close to where I grew up. I just think that that's a real kick and I find myself fortunate to be able to do that.